Hi everybody, um, today I wanted to talk about the world's most critical farms. Um, I really couldn't find any information on it, um, so I had to do uh, some of my own homework, um, and a lot of this um, is new information. Um, so. Um, this is a map that you're looking at here from the Food and Agriculture Organization, um, kind of outlining where the farms are on Earth right now. Um, this is kind of a, an agreement on space that is uh, used as farming and generally considered okay to farm it, but um, you can kind of get a uh, general perspective uh, for the entire Earth. Um, of where the farming maps are. So um, you can uh, explore the data and add that um, here. And it's just a map of agreement on global cropland. Um, so you'd have to look under crops and vegetation and it's right under here um, to see that map. Um, and then you can also change the opacity um, so you can see uh, some of the earth in the background as well. So. Um, but basically this is the map. Um, it's very detailed. You can kind of zoom in here and it will um, kind of show you more details um, for each region um, as you move around here. Um, we're probably primarily going to focus on um, what I think are the more interesting forums um, in Asia and as well as in Africa, um, some of the new areas uh, and Hopefully we're going to look into the Oceania area here, uh, some islands, um, and even look into the Caribbean here, uh, Central America, South America, and uh, North America. Um, so hopefully some of this information will surprise you and be really helpful uh, to think about uh, when it comes to farming and what's really going on. So uh, there's a number of ways to think about farming. Um, basically, you need to have the right kind of dirt and you need to have uh, water and sunlight. So there's kind of three main components. Um, this is a soil grids map here um, that I've been using a lot um, just to help me understand um, what's been going on um, in terms of the farmland. So um, from the United States, you can kind of see um, that most of the better farmland um, is actually located in this pink region or um, orange region. Um, so um, the, one of the problems is that in the orange region, uh, the farmland is so good that it's actually also a wildlife area. So here you can see the jungle um, is actually uh, kind of uh, orange as well. Um, and you can see here the Congo jungle as well. So uh, you kind of want to make a mix and match um, and try to find, um, but you can see here in Asia that quite a bit of the Asian farmland um, this blue stuff is primarily floodplain, um, but it's actually farmed uh, pretty heavily in China. So, um, but I'll just zoom out here. Uh, it's really nice to be able to zoom in and see exactly what's going on with the farmland. So uh, before we get all those details, we also wanna look at population because we're trying to find where the most critical farmlands are. Um, and we have to combine that with population uh, as well as farmland. So, Basically, what you see is India is pretty much where it's at in terms of most critical farmland. You have both high population uh, and you have a lot of dense farming. So, and also in China here, eastern China, uh, you see Beijing is here and Shanghai is there. And basically, this whole area um, kind of is very important farmland. And you can also see a little sliver down here in Indonesia that's very important. And West Africa here, you see Europe kind of uh, in the uh, Central Europe here, and then on the East Coast, and then in California. Um, so this uh, map tells us about population. So I want to switch over here and also look at the uh, rain map. So this is a super important map to consider. Um, it doesn't really load correctly sometimes, unfortunately. So, uh, but you can kind of see. Uh, where the rain is and that really depends on the month so you can kind of pan through here see different months um, as the rain changes and this is for a three month period so I can kind of zoom out but for some reason it's not quite working here so not sure what that bug is but um, it's really helpful to see where the rain is um, over the months um, so I can kind of give you a rundown but basically there is a little pocket here in Africa that gives uh, some pretty heavy rain 
Um, there's also some pretty heavy rain up here in Bangladesh uh, and some pretty heavy rain as you can see all throughout here. So that means you can have rain, um, but that's not the only way to look at it. Um, there's also rivers. So there's a river map here um, provided by the FAO and you can kind of see where the rivers are and you really got to zoom in. It looks pretty crazy, but um, you know, you can see uh, I'll just show you a little bit in India here and you can kind of see the main rivers. It will kind of show you some of the uh, small rivers as well, but and then the main river as well. So uh, you kind of see how that all works. Um, so you can either get uh, water from the river or you can get it from the rain. So both are very critical um, and I would definitely look at both. The other map that I really use a lot um, is this climate map. I'm kind of showing you the general overall climate. So this includes rain, water. Um, it doesn't really say soil, but it does give you a pretty good idea. So you can see that these heavy blue areas are probably not the best to farm in because it's basically jungle. Um, however, here in West Africa, they are trying to farm some of that area. And you can see down in Sri Lanka and on uh, near Singapore and Malaysia here that is also being farmed. Um, so uh, the climate definitely is important, but you want to combine that with the soil map. So it's kind of difficult um, to see uh, both at the same time. Um, another really valuable map is the USDA map, and they actually show you uh, where the farming is done globally, um, for each type of crop. And there's not a whole lot of crops listed um, here, but uh, you can see some of the main, like wheat and rice, for instance. So this you can zoom in on and you can see kind of the farming regions they have them highlighted. And then the green region shows you how much rice is being farmed in that area. So I just picked rice as being the main one because uh, it's uh, very important. I eat rice almost every day. So um, the another nice really thing is it shows you the uh, schedule here for uh, planting and harvesting. So you have planting, uh, growing, and then harvesting here. So you have actually three seasons in China. Um, and it shows uh, two seasons in, uh, in India, and which is quite a long season here. Um, but you can see the month down here uh, and everything. So this is really helpful uh, if you're actually trying to plant, um, just to give you a schedule on what might be possible. Uh, but I really love this map a lot. Um, it's uh, You can also modify it uh, at the satellite imagery here like I did. Um, and then they have individual maps uh, for each country as well. So you can kind of see uh, in China where the percentage of crop production is. Um, and uh, it will show you some details for that. Let's look at India really quick here. So you can see India, um, but it's kind of loading a little bit slowly here. Sorry about that. Uh, but you can see some of the rice production uh, per district and it gives you kind of some more details. Now, obviously Bangladesh was more rice um, than other parts of India, but this is pretty nice and detailed. Uh, it's really awesome uh, to see the details here. However, all that data should be uh, on the main map here and I think you can even download it and put it into Google Earth. So if you zoom in, you can actually see it cross border, which is really nice to see. So. This gives you uh, general farming regions as well as the heavy rice production regions, um, which is super awesome and helpful to see. So um, rice is a hugely important uh, crop, obviously. I really wish this map was available for the entire world. For some reason, they don't have the detail here, but um, this actually every color of dot represents a different type of crop. Um, so uh, what you can see is if you zoom in here, now California has quite a variety here of crops um, because it's a warmer climate. Um, you also can see a uh, different uh, this purple area down here is sugarcane, um, which is pretty cool to see um, if you zoom in. But I'll zoom in a little bit, get some more detail here. And the dog is wanting to say hi. So <laughs> I'm trying to specifically avoid, uh, you know, uh, livestock, but uh, I'm focusing primarily on crops. Um, crops are pretty much about 60% of the United States. Uh, farmland, um, about 30 to 40% is livestock. Uh, 
But what I really love about this map is you can click on it. Um, I, let me just click on an area here. And it will tell you, aha, that's soybeans. It's a green dot. Um, other areas will maybe tell you something else. They'll maybe say cotton or peanuts, actually. So that was pretty interesting little uh, farm there. Now, if you zoom in very closely here, I'm going to just zoom into Memphis because I think it's really cool right along the Mississippi River here. Uh, so you can kind of see... Uh, some details here of uh, the different variety of crops. Um, so as it loads in here, it will kind of show you the details. Um, it does show you pretty much per farm what is going on. So you can kind of start to see there's certain yellow regions here. I think this is corn. Let me just double check on this. Yeah, that's corn is yellow. Um, a lot of the green is, you think, soybeans. Yeah, so, uh, but you can see um, quite a lot of uh, farming that you wouldn't maybe expect actually um, but uh, it's interesting to see also there's a floodplain here so it's not uh, always farmable right next to the Mississippi River so this is just a totally awesome map for the United States um, I definitely recommend zooming in in California you might be surprised how much California has grapes pistachios nuts and almonds um, and also there's a lot of wheat here uh, in the Pacific Northwest where I live. Um, so the crops do kind of change uh, depending, but you can see mostly corn and soybeans uh, located through here, which uh, actually is interesting because you don't see, for some reason I don't see uh, indicators for vegetables, but if you load this up here, uh, it will show you the different colors for each one so you can see there is quite a lot of different uh, colors here uh, and it's really surprising um, that uh, some of these don't really show up very often so uh, really corn and soybeans are an amazingly amount of percentage of the farmland and I really feel that uh, if the livestock is eating up most of this and even a lot of it uh, is used for uh, actually uh, cars and transportation ethanol so uh, some of that is a little bit questionable in terms of what they're trying to do with the farming um, but I definitely recommend uh, trying to find uh, unusual farms it's actually pretty hard to find them um, and it's surprising uh, most of the food that we eat at the grocery store uh, may actually be difficult to find on some of these maps and that was one of the really hard things that uh, I had to figure out here um, you're just kind of surprised um, when you look in California, you can kind of see some of the almond regions and the grape regions and uh, some other ones like that. So in terms of exports, you can see that the United States is quite pretty much the biggest exporter of food in the world, uh, with China being number two. Um, you can see Brazil uh, is interesting as well. Uh, Canada is actually surprisingly up there. Now, this is actually based on money, so it's not necessarily true, but Europe actually has quite a lot of farmland. So if you look at the map here, um, you can see the soil is pretty good here, but maybe not as good as even in the United States. And yet, um, and when you look at the farming map, where is my farming map? There we go. There's quite a lot of farming going on here in Ukraine, for instance, um, and even parts of Western France. Um, and you can see up in here and some other areas. So. Uh, the data is interesting, but it definitely shows that uh, Europe is quite big. The over time map uh, is helpful to look at. Um, you can see that it's going to up here. So you see Europe for a long time, back to 20, 30 years, uh, it's basically been quite big. And Asia actually has been making quite a lot of progress right around 2010. Uh, you can see that Asia is starting to do a lot more exports um, in food. So I actually use this map as my desktop. I like to look at it every day. Um, it's very interesting um, just to see uh, where the climate is. So uh, that's super important to look at. Now, when I was looking to try to help some people uh, with farming areas, uh, the river maps actually became extraordinarily helpful uh, in combination with the uh, weather maps, the rain maps. So you have to kind of see uh, where the rivers are and you can see there is uh, some rivers here in East Africa um, that can be helpful um, to think about when farming. And actually the whole entire Nile River is basically farmed all the way up, uh, even into Sudan. So I'd like to close out this discussion. Um, it is amazing that there is very little global research um, 
on YouTube or available on the internet um, showing, talking, or even discussing about the global farming situation. Um, in general, you can see that uh, there is uh, a big need uh, for farming, um, especially here uh, when you look at India uh, and China, right? Um, so there is a lot of farming going on. Um, there but it's really high density and it's really uh interesting to think about the future of farming especially in africa and south america so i would say that basically when we're considering the world's most critical farms uh, they're basically in africa and south america um and to some extent uh in uh southeast asia here in the islands and also caribbean um, but this is very questionable farming because the environment matters so much so basically this is a lot of wildlife lands especially in the jungle so you have to kind of piece out uh, where you consider the most critical farm so you have to take out uh, the jungle and maybe some uh, habitat uh, for the animals certainly um, and then rethink about the farmland uh, carefully so we're gonna close kind of with the uh, map of the earth here so um, basically, you can see there's quite a lot of jungle here, but uh, that should probably be kept as jungle. And there's actually not a whole lot of jungle uh, left in Africa here. Um, and then you can see uh, this island in particular is kind of a jungle island as well as this one. Um, and then this has kind of been populated with a lot of people. So, um, so the farming situation um, is really interesting um, to look at uh, and zoom in and look at. So what I would recommend doing is grabbing uh, a map. Uh, if you live in the United States, uh, take a look uh, at uh, this other map. Let me show you. So no matter where you live in the world, uh, take a look at this map. It can be hard actually to find farmland in Africa um, or even in South America. Um, unless you know uh, where these blue spots are. So uh, believe it or not, there is not a whole lot of farming being done in Africa or in South America. Um, it's fairly easy to find farms uh, in these regions of the United States um, and uh, India, of course, and uh, China um, near uh, just north of Shanghai and uh, outside of Beijing and also in Europe. So it's really important um, to uh, kind of match these maps. Um, so you take that this map here um, and then uh, you can kind of zoom in to where you're interested in um, and you can let's just go to India here and look at one of the more uh, busy farming areas so um, this whole region here you can see is kind of greener um, and there's definitely a lot of farms uh, right in here so uh, you may want to turn off the roads let me see if I can turn off these roads here uh, just to make it more clear um, and you can see that this is almost 100% farmland through here and there's quite a number of cities uh, in between so uh, what I was very interested in trying to do is finding kind of the critical cities um, and the cities that maybe look like they're more of a problem um, in terms of what's going on with farming uh, so the other important point that I'd mention um, is not only the rain maps, they are super valuable, they're hard to see. You should look at the per month map as well as the three month map, um, but definitely take a look at the uh, river maps. It can actually be quite hard to find uh, good the rivers here. A lot of them do not necessarily go right to the coast. Like here, you can see this river here uh, heading down to Argentina. So this is actually uh, the opposite of what you might expect. There's kind of a... Uh, some rivers that are coming out to the ocean so it actually makes it pretty difficult um, unless you farm on the inland side of this part of south america um, so you can see also uh here um, western africa is a little simpler because most of the rivers do kind of go to the coastline so you can see the rivers kind of heading out to the coastline here um, it's a little more complex uh here in eastern africa you can see there's a number of lakes that they may drain into and then some coastal lines here um, and india let's look at that really quick uh, you can see the uh, Ganges river and the indus river so in pakistan so you can see this importance of this river here uh, you can kind of see the green areas with the farming uh, how that may be irrigated it's uh, actually quite unbelievable how much irrigation actually is necessary uh, in a farm and you can see other parts of China here um, with the Yangtze and the Yellow River and then the Pearl River so uh, 
here, this server and that server. So super important to look at that. And again, uh, never underestimate this climate map um, and for sure take a look at the soil map. So um, there are some hidden areas, uh, especially here in South America. You, know, you can kind of can stay out of the jungle and yet still farm some of these areas here. This you have to be careful because um, of course, uh, the jungle area uh, should be uh, avoided um, and even in here a lot of the monkeys and other wildlife actually require coastal access so even the jungle area is not clearly defined um, so it needs to be uh, carefully monitored so uh, this uh, main map was kind of the agreement on farmlands and you can see um, in Africa in particular um, that a lot of the farmland there is some farmland even in the jungle um, some of this red area is kind of warning areas um, and more traditional farming is in blue areas so that have been uh, long long uh, established um, but uh, Nigeria you can see definitely has a big farmland chunk here Ethiopia and one of the main problems actually is uh, getting farm uh, land here in East Africa and also Guyana and some other areas so it is quite complicated because this is near the equator you have wildlife uh, questions uh, forestry questions and it, uh, it's very complicated and it's super important uh, in terms of South America and Africa um, but uh, to look at what's been going on uh, in terms of high density farming, definitely India is worthwhile looking at here and China. And also thinking about uh, some of these rural areas uh, like the Middle East, how that farming is basically done. It's actually surprising how much farming is done in Iraq, for instance, and Iran um, and Turkey and how that all uh, helps out uh, other areas of the Middle East. And there's actually no farming almost done uh, in some areas in the Middle East. So um, how they get their food uh, basically depends on other areas. So you can see how important Ukraine is um, in this whole uh, farming thing. It's basically an entire country of farmland. Um, and even for all of Europe, uh, the farmland is very critical there. And even in parts of Russia here, uh, Western Russia, and you can see kind of uh, Kazakhstan, uh, some farmland here as well. Um, but this global farm map, map is just unbelievably helpful um, in seeing things. Um, and then the soil map, again, I can't emphasize how important uh, this soil map is to uh, really understanding things. There are some uh, kind of questionable areas. You have to see like these purple areas. It looks like there is soil there, but actually it, if you zoom in on the satellite map, you can see that there's actually uh, very difficult farming in some of those areas. So you really have to, there's actually kind of a lot less farmland than you might expect. And even up here it gets pretty cold, but you have uh, pretty good soil. And then there's actually hard rock. So the soil isn't actually that deep. So the surface level, the depth of the soil actually matters quite a lot as well. Now on this map here, uh, you can do the crop explorer and you can click on these regions, which is super cool. So you can do United States, uh, South America, I think they show East Africa here, West Africa, and it will kind of give you details um, for each of those regions, or you can click these, and then you can click the type of crop. So, like I said, they don't really show a whole lot of crops here um, relative to that really awesome United States map, which is here, where they show, um, you know, just a whole lot of different dots. So I really like that map a lot. Um, but um, it is helpful to kind of see um, different countries and you can get some details so um, let's uh, just look at Ukraine if I can find it here Eurasia it looks like they don't even have it so let's look at Russia for instance uh, so the nice thing is I haven't really loaded this up but you can download the KML file and it looks like you can load that right in but the one problem is it'd be nice to get a whole earth map um, of everything um, but uh, you can also do additional resources here kind of go through the things here to see exactly the details um, on the maps um, but I did kind of stick to the rice one because rice is super important and here is the overall rice map um, that you can take a look at so I kind of wrote up a huge document called the world's most critical urban farms um, there's a couple different documents um, that I've been working on um, there's also this one called the summer children's farm tours um, basically, this highlights uh, a few of these locations around the world that would be super cool to work with um, to visit some of these farms. Um, I kind of circled them um, as either really interesting islands or 
uh, places uh, that you can either vacation to and check out a farm. Um, and there is a whole bunch of regions in the United States as well that we looked at those farmland maps. Um, and then I put all these crop schedules so you might want to say visiting a certain farm uh, during planting season, harvesting season, or growing season. This way you can kind of see uh, what that season is. It's certainly worthwhile doing at least three trips, coming back and checking out uh, the area. So there's just a whole bunch of just uh, information here. Here's the soil map again. Uh, population map uh, and then some different circles showing all the different regions and then this is kind of a population map um, so you can see all the details of where the significant populations are so when you combine the farming plus population um, you can kind of look at those areas as well um, and then there's some very interesting ideas um, looking at how to do import and export uh, between certain regions, uh, how certain areas may be linked uh, spiritually or other ways uh, around uh, Earth. And then there's also some kind of field maps. So some of the clouds and weather patterns uh, we didn't really discuss, but this is a field electromagnetic field map of Earth and looking at farms along uh, critical regions in that, which is super interesting as well. Um, and then you should definitely think about phase of the moon. Um, a lot of farmers used to uh, plant crops based on the phase of the moon. So there's different phase of the moon uh, for planting the seasons and things like that, as well as uh, how the sun is working uh, with different sunspots, uh, temperature, and different things. So there's just a lot of information here. Um, this is a kind of an interesting thing for you can see about prices and United States average uh, per acre. So you can see about $700 per acre. Um, some areas getting even more so you can see California making quite a lot of money So if you're interested in the areas that are making significant amount of money uh, From farming these are kind of where you want to target. Um, you can look at that map I don't know if I can get a hold of a global map um, But here is a per farm total value so you can see again California doing pretty good here And then some areas in here and then the Memphis area right along the Mississippi River um, actually each farm making almost a million dollars, uh, which is pretty awesome uh, for the farmers. So, uh, and then here you can see one dot represents $30 million. So you can see uh, where all this money is in terms of farming. So net cash, this is um, actually the profit. So actually they're surprisingly not making as much as you think about $40,000 Per year is what the farmers are making. Some of them are making $200,000 per year, but it really depends on the region. So uh, I did diagram a whole bunch of different ideas on how to work uh, with different areas. So this is just some areas that I thought were good, not so good to farm. Um, this is a climate classification map overlay. Uh, you can download that. I can uh, you basically download the, the Copenhagen climate directly from their website and then overlay that on Google Earth. And then you can start seeing where some of these wildlife regions are. Here I was saying right here and here looks like very critical for wildlife, probably not a good idea. Um, I added a whole lot of maps here for, uh, this is rain per month. So this is the 10th month, 9th month, 11th month. So the rain definitely changes. You can see 8th month, 7th month, 6th month and so on so this is a super detailed thing for the rain um as well as what is this one? Oh, wind map so uh i was just interested in some other things um and there's the value of food i kind of graphed uh, some things here i can get in some details uh in terms of how uh let me see if i can even zoom in here uh geez sorry about that um well anyway so there's some details on import and export that i discuss here um, and also uh, just how different regions uh, are kind of related. So this is more, huh, gosh, I wonder where I got this map from. So it's probably from the river map. Uh, maybe it's a better version, but you can kind of start to see, I circled some of the areas where the rivers really matter. And you can see along the coast here, Africa, India, uh, and in Europe, um, and a whole bunch of just, just <laughs> different stuff. So. Uh, this kind of, again, discuss uh, some farming on the poles and even in outer space. So 
I uh, came up with this idea of thinking about astronomy farms. Um, so it's kind of cool because uh, basically uh, if you're interested in outer space, there's a whole bunch of areas um, to try to farm in, uh, including other planets and how that would relate to farming here on Earth. Um, kind of some crazy ideas, um, but cool ideas um, to think about in terms of how we can farm. Um, and this shows a place down in Brazil. Um, and even farming on the moon and how electrical grids may be related um, because sometimes you need to power the agriculture. Uh, this is a actual space launch facility in South America where the European Space Agency launches their rocket ships and where a potential farm could be placed. Um, so looking at how we could potentially work on farming uh, in outer space here is an example of where a location uh, in South America, uh, European Southern Observatory, where they could potentially work on farming next to the observatory. So, uh, you know, there's obviously you have to import all their food, but uh, why not think about food and outer space at the same time? So uh, there's some other areas here, uh, East Africa, uh, the Middle East. So the Middle East is obviously a very weird place to farm, and there is some very interesting farming going on in the Middle East. Uh, me actually and uh, some other things so just a lot of information but in general i uh, hope you enjoyed uh, studying all the world's most critical urban farms uh, take a look at the map in detail zoom in take a look around uh, try to find a local farmer uh, i'm kind of wanting to even stand outside the local grocery store and uh, start uh, doing local tours with the local farms uh, we're thinking of driving across uh, different areas and just visiting farmers visiting churches mosques uh, temples uh, whatever just to try to help uh, spiritual people and everyone uh, understand what's really going on with farming i was super surprised um with actually the problems in farming um, how few farms there are how how sometimes a lot of the farm is just with uh, corn and soybeans um, and where actually does the food really come from and who are the people and where are the places so it's super there's still a lot of work to do and uh, finding people and making friends uh, with the people that you want to uh, get to work with so thanks again um, i'll just go through the maps really quickly again this is the main uh, farming map this is a soil map world population map really detailed you can get some uh, water maps uh, overall uh, looking at uh, where the imports and exports are um, just a global map and here's a climate map um, definitely helpful um, and the river map and there's various different versions of this river map of there apparently so I'll look around there was a better one that's a little more clear this has a lot of detail in it certainly you can look by crop you can have this map for the United States um, super awesome to looking at some things um, and you can also even find out who the property owners are of certain farms uh, using something like this land grid um, so i hope you really enjoyed everything let me know if you got any questions i'd be glad to talk with you about farming i think it's super interesting a uh, super way awesome way to understand the earth uh, and help out uh, in a good way see you later ciao